worshipers, I'm Pastor Kurt Lumpko, coming to you through the support of Christ Lutheran Church in Rochester. We are coming into the sixth Sunday of Easter. We're still in the Easter season. It also happens to be Mother's Day, so we'll try to acknowledge both those things in our worship today. We are scattered, but in spirit we are all together, and that is pleasing to God, togetherness. With that, we're ready to move into worship. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A paraphrase on Psalm 133. O God, how precious it is for us, and how pleasing it must be to you when your sons and daughters learn how to live and work together in unity. It is in the measure that we do this that we begin to resemble you and to carry out most effectively your purposes in our disjointed and discordant world. Come, let us together bless his name, rejoice in his loving concern for us, declare his worth to all creatures, and walk in obedience to his will. It is the same God who made heaven and earth and all of us who dwell therein. Let us worship and serve him together. O oh God, how precious it is for us and how pleasing it must be to you when your sons and daughters learn how to live and work together in unity. The first reading for this day is from Acts chapter 10, beginning at the 34th verse. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. So ends the first reading. The epistle reading is from 1 John chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. So ends 
the reading of the epistle. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my father, ask my, in my name, the father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the gospel of the Lord. God has spoken to us and we speak to him in our words of confession, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today is uh, Mother's Day, also the sixth Sunday of Easter. We'll try to recognize those as we move through our thoughts. There is a woman who celebrates Mother's Day in a rather strange way. She buys gifts for her husband and all the kids, and then she makes a special meal for them. And someone said, that seems kind of backwards. What's going on? And she said, well, without my husband and kids, I couldn't be a mother, so I just want to thank them for giving me that most important part of my life. Point is, you can't be a mother by yourself. God establishes families. To get that in perspective, we have to go all the way back to Genesis, <clears throat> where God does the creation. Each day, <clears throat> if you remember, he looks at what he has done, and he says, it is good, except for the sixth day, the last day of his creative activity, when Adam is formed from the dust of the ground and the breath of life is breathed into him. After that, God says, it is very good. Now, humankind, the crown of creation, is complete. And Adam is one, a complete individual all by himself. But there is another phrase after all this, that phrase is not good. It comes in relation to Adam. God said it is not good that the man should be alone. And so God has something to do about that. He knows that Adam cannot be all that he was meant to be all by himself. What about us? Well, God has made us complete in ourselves with our relationship with Christ. He looks at us and sees holy people. And God could say it is good. But perhaps he could also say not good. It is not good that we should be alone. Fortunately, Christ saved others too. There are other people that we can relate to. 
we are brought into a relationship because it's not good to be alone. Being alone can happen even in crowds. Maybe you've had that experience of having a lot of people around and you just don't know anybody. And even though you're in a crowd, you feel very much alone. It can happen in marriages when two people are together physically, but far apart in every other way, thinking about themselves instead of focusing on the other person. It can happen in families where children are at odds with each other and everybody's fighting. Everybody's kind of in their own little cocoon all by themselves. Well, we can be alone even with others. Sometimes it's because we condemn them for their ideas or make assumptions about their financial security, their financial standing, their education or whatever. I remember one scene in a movie where a lady had come into a large amount of money, but before that she had kind of lived in poverty. And she went into this exclusive shop and started looking at things and the lady said, I don't think we can help you. And so she left, but later she came back with all her finery that she had bought and said, do you remember me? Well, you made a big mistake. You were going to commission, right? Well, this is all that you missed out on. You made a large mistake and we can too, if we make the wrong idea come to our minds with other people. Sometimes we might perceive that they're just too stuck up, but maybe maybe they're just shy or sinful. I'll never forget this one little guy, about four years old, he was in preschool. I heard him talking to his Sunday school teacher. He's talking at a particular girl that was in the school with him. And he said, she says bad words. She's a sinner. And so sometimes we can exclude people as well when we don't approve of what they do. So this is how people get separated, but God said it is not good to be alone. God's first answer is marriage. We are told that God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he took one of his ribs and formed Eve. And when Adam saw her, he said, this at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. It's interesting that she got her name, even though she was an individual person, complete in herself because of the creation. She also needed to have someone to be with in order to fulfill all that she could be. And so when she had children, her name was called Eve, which means the mother of all the living. Now, we have one complete person, another complete person, but they are together. And you might say it forms the, the number 11. There are all kinds of possibilities that people can do when there's more than one. And then God's second answer is children, kids. They show God's creative action and they show that even though God would be capable of making all the people he needed, he chooses to share his creative activity with us. And they often give us lots of joy, lots of creativity. But sometimes they're a little problem too. This could be a T standing for terror. <laughs> I know one of my uncles called his kids the monsters. <laughs> and sometimes that was not too far off. In any case, kids add something, something creative. Sometimes there might be a lot of them or a lot of friends, and then there would be representing the number five, all those other activities that kids bring into our relationships. His third answer is people in general. Not all need to have kids to have a lot of different relationships. This letter L is 50, I think, in Roman numerals. That could represent all kinds of other relationships that are possible with families and all the people that are involved. Just think of all the names you could be called in a family. It could be husband, wife, children, aunts, uncles, cousins, all those things. 
all part of the creative activity by God so that we are not alone. And then the X, that's 10. That could be 10 times the joy, 10 times the action as people are in our lives. And we need to remember that God's son was born of a human mother. He became part of the human family. He shared his life, his death, and in the future, we will share his resurrection. He rose, he punched a hole in death and came out on the other side. And then he said, follow me. And that's the promise we live with. In this resurrection season, we are again and again reminded that this resurrection of Jesus is ours too, as we are connected with him. And that assures us that we will not be alone. In the Christian community, we have fellowship for now and forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Father, as we remember that we are not alone in searching for your will and purpose, we are thankful for those who have supported our faith, for our mothers who are often the first to help us pray, for our fathers when they have given good examples to follow. And looking back, we are thankful for the saints of history, for the apostles, and for all who struggle to follow Jesus and establish the early church. We are not alone. We are surrounded by many witnesses of the past and the present, whose lives showed your goodness and power. As you have worked in the lives of others, so that they loved and served in response to what you have done, we ask you to work with us through the power of your Holy Spirit, to lead us in your ways, to avoid unkind criticism which can wreck families and to replace it with a consideration for others which can make mothers proud and bring joy to all. Love builds more love, so help us to love. Give comfort and healing to those who are ill, especially those who still struggle with the virus, both in this country and worldwide. Provide good caregivers for those who are lonely and those who suffer in mind or spirit. Let mothers know your love and let them teach their children to know it as well. Hear our prayers for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again to give new life, to share with others, and who has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.